Hi, today I'm going to show you our Suprema four door access control kit. Um, this is what you might see in distribution when you go to purchase it. Um, so this is what it looks like here. It comes with our core station as well as four different options for the different readers you might use. So we have the BioEntry R2, which is a fingerprint reader as well as a card reader. XPass D2, which is a gang box style with a keypad on it, or an XPass D2 gang box with the gang box style without a keypad, or an XPass D2 mullion style. So in this case today, I have one R2 and one XPass D2 mullion style. So get this a little closer here. So we'll see what we're working. So let's go over the core kit or core station itself first. So it has four door ports on it already. So you have door port zero, one, two, and three. So counterclockwise on the board here. Now on each door port, I'll just go over one, the one door port real quick for you. So over on door port three, we have the relay here, um, two inputs for your Rex and door position switch. Uh, TTL out, um, which is two of them, that and Wigan. So that is if you're using a third party reader with our door port, with our core station, you can connect them to the door port. And the outs would be to trigger the LEDs or the buzzers on the reader itself. And then we have 12 volt DC power out to the readers and then 45 connection at the top here. Now, when using our Suprema readers, you want to use a 485 connection and not the Wigan connection. So I'll go over that here in a minute. But um, as you can see, also on each door port, we have large light um, for when the relays trigger. You actually see that come on after a while when I get to that point, as well as lights for the supervisions when they're actually being triggered and violated. Now, also on the board here at the bottom, we have the 12 volts. DC coming into the unit, as well as a couple of auxiliary inputs, which you could wire a cabinet tamper to that. Um, so each, like I said, each door port is here, and you have 40, four 45 connections on the board. And at the very top, let me show you the top of the board here, we have another 45 connection, which is called a host connection, and then the ethernet connection when connected to the LAN. All right. So zoom in here on door port three. As I've already went ahead and wired in a Rex button and a door contact as well. So we'll test those out here in a little bit. Um, now when you wiring up the R2, let me just go over that real quick with you. The R2, this that's the front of it, the R2, bioentry R2 is a fingerprint reader. Just present your finger here and card reader up here. Um, this is the power connection, 12 volt, and then, like I said, we'll use the 45 connection. That's for this one. And then the gray and black are 45 ground and shield um, in this application. All right. So, we'll go ahead and wire this in. Go right into the 45. And then I want to take the shield at 45 ground and go to the ground and put as well, or the 12 volt ground. So all the grounds on the board are same polarity and have continuity between them. And 
now put the 12 volt positive in. And now with the Rex, I wired into port six and the door contact are wired into port seven. Um, now something to take note with any of our readers, no matter which model you're working with, there's a serial number here on the back of the unit. It's good to document that serial number before you mount them and document where you mount them because when you're inside Biostar 2, which is software you use to add them in, um, you see them by serial number. So if you have multiple readers of the same model type, you can't necessarily tell where they're apart. So if you document it beforehand, just a best practice um, to do so. Um, I'll go ahead and we'll wire in, I have an X-Pass D2 Moyen style. I want to wire that into door port zero. And now this is the X-Pass D2 Moyen. And now on the back of the unit, it has, it's sealed as far as the wire is going in. So this can be outdoor, um, it's outdoor rated, it can be mounted outdoors and so forth. While the R2 I just showed you, it has pigtails that can come out the back. It's for indoor use only. So with this pigtail here, a lot of people ask, oh, do we have an adapter for that to connect to it? No, we do not. So we just tell people cut it off completely or just cut off the wires you want to use. This application, I'm going to be just using the 45 and power. So take the red and black for the 12 volt, snip them. And then same thing with the 45 connector. And then you can just tape the rest of them off. So let me strip these back. For the 12 volts. And once again, I have my Rex button, which are wired into input zero and a door contact into input one. All right. So I'll go ahead at the top, I'm gonna to go ahead and plug my ethernet connection in. And then at the bottom, I already pre-wired the uh, 12 volts coming in. So let's get that plugged in. Now we'll see the unit come on. Okay, so now we've got the core station all wired up. We'll go ahead and find it inside of Biostar 2 and configure the system. So here we're at the dashboard. So first, I'm already logged in. So go ahead and click on devices. Then you would click up here, search devices. Found the core station. Go ahead and click Add. One device is added. Um, so just go in here to the core station properties. Click on this page. It brings up the core station properties. This field you can change, so you can label it to what you is appropriate. If it's in a particular com room, if you have multiple of them, you can label it which com room or so forth, so you can identify it and know where it's um, installed at. Um, pick your time zone. I'm in the Eastern time zone. Um, here, if you want to set the IP or change it, you could do so. So if you uncheck that, there. 
um, and then you can change the IP or or and change the server and so forth. Um, scroll down here. That's pretty much all you'll need initially for that. Hit apply. Now come up to the core station in the directory tree. If you right click and then do search slave device. What it's going to do is pull the 485 um, circuits for any devices on there. And we're looking for the BioEntry R2 and the XPath D2 we've already wired in. It sees it here, finds their IDs and so forth. So just acknowledge got the tamper because I don't have the back plate on the back of the unit so it has a tamper built in. So um, in this case we'll go to the property page of the R2. Once again in the name field you can name this. So I want to call this um, lobby to office door or actually reader. Um, and then down here you have the different means of authentication, which you have fingerprint only, and you can do card and fingerprint. So you have the options of both when it's configured this way. So just scroll down, um, got a few other options, different card types the reader will read when using cards as well. So go ahead and hit apply. Now go to the XPass D2. We'll call this front entrance reader. And here with authentication mode, you have card only because it's that's all it can do. It has no um, fingerprint or biometrics on it. And apply. Okay, once you're done with that, we'll go ahead down to doors. Click add door. We'll call this front entrance door. Now, under this drop down, you pick the device. Don't pick the core station, you actually pick the reader. I've seen people pick the core station and it's not working because it's not an actual reader. So, do front entrance reader. Now, that's wired into door port zero of the core station, so we're going to select relay zero. And then for the exit button, it is wired into input zero as well. And then the door sensor is input one. So my exit button is actually normally open. And then my door position switch door sensor is normally closed. So just scroll down. This is the time of seconds the relay will be engaged with a valid entry or card present or when the REX is triggered. So hit apply. I'll go ahead and add the fire entry R2 in. Go ahead and pick the lobby office door. That is wired to door port 3, so we use relay 3. And the Rex button is tied to input 6, while the door position switch is input 7. And once again, my Rex is normally open while my come on, door position switch is a normally closed circuit. And apply. Okay. Now we'll go up to users and we'll add myself in as a user. So You've got the different fields here to fill out. You have the little red dots here. People might think, oh, I need to fill every field out. You do not. Just um, focus on the name field and then the ID field. Now, the ID field um, will auto-populate as you put users in, but you can change this as you're creating a new user. But once you save the user or apply the user, you cannot come back and change this user ID. So if you want to have your own custom user number or ID numbers, Make sure you set them up as you're creating new users. Um, operator level refers to if the individual will be logging into the BioStar 2 software. I'm not going to set this up for that. So just leave that as none. Now this is where you'll present 
or add your credentials. So first I want to give myself a fingerprint credential. Select the device you want to enroll on. So we just select the BioEntry R2. Um, go ahead and click View Image just to show so you can see what it looks like when it's reading the finger. So click Add. This brings up your first finger. You can actually have multiple fingers if you want. You can have up to 10, but I'm only going to do one in this case. So I'll go ahead and delete these others I created. So highlight the one finger you're going to be selecting. So go ahead and do scan. So I'm presenting my finger to the reader. Okay. And then do enroll. All right. Now I'm going to add myself a card as well. Just card here. Um, type of card. I'm using a CSN card. I can enroll it by the reader. So register by a reader, or you can assign a card if you already have a card in the system, or you can enter it manually. So I'm just going to read by card, reader, and then I want to select the actual reader. So I'm going to do the XPass D2, then click read card. And it auto-populates the card information. Click on enroll. Okay. So at this point, as well, you can assign access groups, but I have not created any access groups at this point, so I cannot apply one. So I'll just hit apply to the user. Now we'll go down to access control. This is where you'll add access groups and access levels. So first, we'll do an access group. We'll call this 24 7 all doors access group. Now I'll go down to well, I actually add an access level. There's none to be picked from, so I'll go ahead and add one. Call this 24-7 access level. <clears throat> and then here you select your doors. So I'll go ahead and do all doors. And then the schedule, which right now, this is the default schedule of tw always, which is 24-7. And apply. And now you can assign users or users group. So right now, by default, you have all users as an option, or you can go pick the individuals. So I'll just pick myself, hit apply, and that's done. So now go do functional tests to make sure it actually reads. So we'll go over here to monitoring so you can see what's happening in the logs while I actually read. So I'll go ahead and present the cards to the XPass D2. See the relay fires and disengages. And now if I do the recs, it fires as well. Show one more time because you can see how the supervised changes when it's engaged. Okay. And now I'll go ahead and do my finger to the R2. The relay changes state. That's good. Now I'll present my card. See the reader's flashing yellow because it's expecting another input. So now I'll present my finger again and it engages. And then I'll do my Rex button and the relay engages and release it. And now you can see if I move the door contact magnet, I'll get a door force. I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge that. Return my magnet. And then I'll do a valid read, remove the magnet, and simulating a door held open. Now you get the door held open alarm. And that's it for configuring the core station um, with the XPass D2 and a BioEntry R2.